Welcome to the Dr. April Jasper Show, relevant conversations for business owners of today. We are proud to be sponsored by Zeiss. Zeiss has been a partner in our practice for so many years. We appreciate all of their innovation, their attention to bringing us new products to bring value to our patients. We're thrilled to have our new OCTA with the Cirrus 6000 in our practice. It has already been a tremendous asset to our practice. Our patients love it. Now is the time to invest in technology. Welcome everyone. We're excited to be back with you again with Allison. And uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about some questions that she brings to us from the students. Yep. And students anywhere, Allie, I know you're at Nova, but a lot yeah. of these questions are things you see on chat boards, you see on different uh, places where you guys talk and and, and converse with each other. Yep. So all the time. <laughs> people may notice that we are in our optical. So this is advanced eye care specialist. This is our office. Allie has the shirt on. She's spent uh, numerous hours in this building. Yeah, hours, days, months, years, all of it. Exactly. All of it. <laughs> so she's very familiar with it, but we thought it might be fun to change up our background and let you guys see where we have spent so much of our time and doing all of the things that we talk about here on the podcast. So let's get started. Allison, tell us what is something that is a question that comes up? Ask any way you want to. I promise everyone on the podcast that we will be educational and inspirational. And for students, I just want you guys to be able to ask the questions that maybe you're afraid to ask or don't know who to ask at school. So go ahead. Yeah, so I think the next biggest one, especially now, so right now we're doing a lot of, we're learning retinoscopy and we're learning keratometry and all of these awesome skills that we're gonna use for the rest of our lives, but we're learning the manual version of all of this stuff. So there's no automatic for opters. There's no awesome, just refractive machines that do the keratometry and everything involved that go with it. It's literally the manual stuff, which is great. I'm glad we're learning the foundational stuff that right. we, that we're going to use forever because if we don't have machines someday, we're going to need to know how to do it. But it is just, I mean, everyone wants to know why is that where we're starting? Because I mean, a lot of the people who were techs that came into optometry school, they worked at offices and practices right. like ours where we have all these awesome machines and all of this technology and now we're going back to level zero and we're like oh, why i'm very well confused. and you probably <laughs> want to know too if you're really going to use a lot of that right like are we ever going to use a yeah. keratometer well and i think <laughs> so the other thing too if you remember even back to undergrad ally you probably had classes where you took a class and thought, I'm never going to use this. Yep. Why do I have to do this? And it's a common thing that we all think. But here's what you've heard me say before. So I'll answer the question in many different ways, probably in the next uh, 15 minutes. But the thing I think that is important to remember is that you don't know the end of the education. You don't know where it's leading. You know what you want to do. But it's hard as a student to understand why you're having to learn all these different segments and all these different things. What I can tell you is 30 years later, maybe more, dad could keep me honest on that, but 30 years later, I can tell you, I'm glad I did it the way that they have it laid out. And there may come a day when it isn't something you have to learn because nobody ever picks up a hand instrument and uses it. But you've seen me work with kids and you know how much I love working yeah. with children. Yeah. And there are many times that we'll be in the exam room. You've seen me on sitting on the floor playing yep. with the kids and using my hand instruments because that's the easiest way to get the information I need. And I will tell you, there is nothing worse than having a patient come in and you need to adapt and you don't know how because you never learned it. Yeah, so sense. you may only use those hand instruments once every, I don't know, six months, but you also could be in a setting where you use it all the time. You'll use them on mission trips. Yeah. So if you ever go on mission trips, you can ask Katie, who uh, has been on several in the last couple of years. She'll tell you that she's had to go back to the basics. And even though they have a lot of amazing technology as well. I would argue nobody has the technology we have. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but although they have a lot of incredible technology, there are times when you just go back to the beginning, go back to what you started with, and it works really well if you have the knowledge to take it and use it for that purpose. Yeah. So if you think about something else, what's something else that you could go back to? And what I think is kind of funny is even photography. When I was 
Oh my gosh, you'll love this, Allie. I don't know if I've ever told you. When we first bought our private practice, we were three blocks away, right across the street over there. There was a Winn-Dixie shopping center. That's where our office was. Well, when we bought the practice, I didn't have a whole lot of technology. It was all the oldest, like older than what you're learning on. Yeah. But I went into the office and they had a camera. The camera they had was a Polaroid camera. So I'm taking oh pictures gosh. of retinas and it's spitting out a Polaroid photo. Like, and like an actual po- Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm clipping them into the chart. But I kid you not, there was a patient and uh, I can't name names because it's not HIPAA compliant. If he were here, he would be sitting here laughing and joking with me because he is that kind of patient. But I saw him. And the doctor that I bought the practice from had been seeing him every year. They were actually really good friends. And he came in to see me and I looked at his optic nerve and I thought, there's something not right about this. And I needed prior photos. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, I'm going to be just out of luck because they didn't have a camera. And I remembered we have our Polaroid Mm -hmm. camera. How nice. (laughs) So I go flip through his chart and sure as can be. There are Polaroid photos from 15 years ago. Oh my gosh. Not from today, from Not then. From then. Oh my gosh. And I could look and I could see enough of the nerve yeah. to know that the nerve that they had photographed 15 years ago was not the nerve I was seeing today. Wow. And so this was actually very unique and interesting because this patient had a type of glaucoma known as low tension glaucoma, which means his pressures were never over 22. And back in the old days, Mm -hmm. we thought glaucoma only was a pressure of high IOP. Right. So I look at his pictures and I look at him today and I thought, yeah, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. So we right away did a visual field. We were able to see that the visual field showed that he had a visual field defect. His pressures were low. I think at the time they were 16, which is really, really good if you're only looking at pressures. Right. But because of that, we were able to diagnose him with glaucoma. Of course, I had a newer camera by then. And if we fast forward to the technology of today, thank goodness we have it because Mm -hmm. it, it makes us such better doctors. Yeah. But back to your question, if you don't have the ability to interpret the data from the old days, then that is going to be harmful. If you can't do the things that you need to do to better understand how the technology we have today works, then it changes, I think, a lot about your understanding of the profession. So I'm a big fan of learning the old ways. Are you looking for a nutritional supplement to help with your day-to-day vision needs? Look no further than MacuHealth. Recommended by doctors worldwide, MacuHealth offers a full line of products designed to support your vision and eye health. Available through eye care professionals on Amazon.com and directly on our website at MacuHealth.com. And here's the best part. Use the code OME24 when ordering direct from MacuHealth for special discounts. MacuHealth, nutrition you can see. Okay, fine. (laughs) Now, that doesn't mean I don't think, though, when you get into practice, and that doesn't, so here's what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean when you get out of uh, school that you're going to come to practice here and we're going to go back and retrofit the office with all the old stuff. That isn't going to happen. Even though Polaroid cameras have come back. (laughs) (laughs) Not like that. (laughs) Not in the office they haven't. It is not at all okay. You're not going to take a Polaroid picture of my shoulder and diagnose, you know, a rotator cuff injury. Just isn't going to happen. I'm trying to imagine how that even works and it's not making any sense to me. So I won't even go into that conversation, but it's fine. (laughs) There's, I think, years in life where you're going to go through so much change. And then you guys probably in your time, I don't know how much change there really is going to be as far as technology, but what the big change will be for you is AI. So you're going to find that all of the technology we have in the office, you probably at some point won't even have to determine if it's normal or not normal. But on the other hand, what you also are learning as you practice all these skills is you're learning how to take the data and look at the human, the person, Mm -hmm. look at the information, collect the data, collect the data from the patient because I've heard you practicing histories and that's beautiful. Yes. Then (laughs) you put it together because it's not all about just the image and I keep pointing to my shoulder, but it's not all about the picture. Mm -hmm. It's also about the image, the history, and then putting it all together 
to be able to create and paint that picture of what's really happening with a patient today. Yeah. The case history is definitely one of the most important things. And I love that there's no technology in that at all. Ah, that's I all love communication. that there's no technology in that part because it's just all personal with the patient. I will say, I think that is yeah. something that's really fun about them doing the retinoscopy that with the manual for opter in the clinics and stuff is I've noticed right. when patients come in, they're always like, Oh my goodness, what is this? Like, I mean, sometimes they're used to automatic for opters and then they come in and they're doing this different skill on them and they're like oh my gosh what are you doing and it's fun they to think watch. it's new yeah <laughs> and it's fun to watch the students explain to the patient oh yeah this is actually old <laughs> but it's still very reliable which is why we're learning how to do it right but wow yes, that's good stuff <laughs> i think the benefit so you asked specific specifically mm -hmm. about a digital for opter and i will tell you what's interesting and it's i actually talked about this in a webinar i did last night is that if you look at the old days, and, and I think the reason we did this, so the reason the conversation came up last night in the webinar that Carl and I were doing uh, was because, and those webinars, by the way, Allie's been watching and learning, yep. so y'all should attend. It's last OME Live. Last night was anterior segment. That's mm -hmm. right, it was. <laughs> <clears throat> so <laughs> he had a picture, and it uh, was a picture that said tradition, I think is was the title. Yes, I don't know if you I remember. Think that was it. And the phrase underneath it was something to the effect of just because it's the way it's always been done doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. Right. Something like something that. Something like that. It was pretty close. Yeah. And I, I made it, a, I actually didn't make a joke of it, but I made a point of the fact that in our old office, everything was different. Technology was different. I remember my hair catching on fire because oh, the projector, right, <laughs> we used to use projectors with light bulbs and they got so hot at, that if you touched them, you'd burn yourself. And I never forget my hair catching on fire. It was crazy, the stuff we had to deal with. Yikes. <laughs> but one of the things that was really interesting about being in that setting and looking at how it's different then in tradition and how it changes, I used a manual for opter. So those of you who are learning, you know you're... Uh, you know, you're loosening it, you're bringing it over in front of the patient, you're yep. checking their prescription with it. Yep. What's different about that than a digital one is your arm is up there the entire time, mm -hmm. moving the dials and yeah, turning the dials thing, yep. and you're living like this and moving your arm around. The problem I didn't know that I might have down the road and I do now is I have a bone spur in my neck. And so the bone spur is in a place where you really can't do surgery. It's not a fun thing to know that it lives there and it is there. That's terrifying. But that's one of the things that happens when you have a job where you have repetitive movement and repetitive motion. Oh my gosh. You put your body at risk. Great. So I'm going to have a bone spur. I'm in not. A few no, years, you're not. That's not <laughs> what I'm saying. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What I'm saying is you're going to use newer and better technology, not just because of the fact that it provides value to the patient, but also it's a better way for you to be able to practice yeah. in, the, in the office. And technology, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes on another uh, another one maybe that you talked to me about. But the, the technology that we have, I have always believed it's about bringing value to patients and improving efficiencies in the practice so that you have better outcomes. And if you can fulfill those three things when you make a purchase, whether it pays for itself because you can bill an insurance for it or pays for itself because it's included in your exam fee, one way or the other, it's going to make a difference in your business. Yeah, that's awesome. What did I leave out? So did I answer the question? The question yes, I, think I think was, is uh, new why technology are, yeah. important? And, and why are we learning the old ways? Yeah. Yeah. So you're learning the old ways because you need to have a better understanding mm -hmm. of where the profession is today. Yep. You need to be able to sense. go back and work in any setting. Mm hmm. And you need to be able to know that in the end, the technology that you have today is able to do what it needs to do. But if you're ever in a place where you need to go back and understand it better and be able to do it a different way, it's there. Yeah. And your knowledge is there. Yeah. And you have to pass your boards. And that. That's kind of important, <laughs> too. Yeah. Forgot about that. <laughs> well, Allie, thanks for hanging out with me. We thanks, appreciate Mom. you. And I'm so glad you're uh, going to be in the office one day and yes you'll have different equipment than what you have there just a little <laughs> and thank you all for listening we appreciate you being a part of this for students by students